Okay, so we're going to go over briefly molar and canine classifications. So basically there's class 1, 2, and 3 occlusion. So class 1 is what you want. That's where the mesiobuccal cusp of this upper first molar, or number 6, or, tooth, or upper left 6, fits right in the groove between these two cusps on the lower molar. That's class 1 molar. That's what you want. Class 1 canine is where the cusp tip of the upper 3 or the upper canine fits right where the lower 3 and 4 contact. So right there. This, uh, there's a little bit of a tooth size discrepancy, so I'll shift it back just a touch. You want it right there. That's class 1 canine. Class 2 is where the chin of the person is back, like this. So in class 1, the front teeth are just in front of and just overlapping those bottom teeth. That's what you want. Class 2 is where the person's chin is back some, like this. And so now the mesiobuccal cusp of that upper 6 lines up where the 5 and 6 contact on the bottom. And class 2 canine is where this cusp tip is anterior to where the 4 and the 5 contact, or the 3 and the 4, pardon me, contact. And in a class two, you end up with extra overjet, or these top teeth are <clears throat> out ahead of the bottom ones a ways like that. So that's class two. Class three is where the bottom jaw is too far forward, and so you end up with the mesiobuccal cusp of the upper six, upper first molar, lining up distal to the groove between these two cusps on the lower six. So that's a class three occlusion. And a class three canine is where this cusp tip is distal to where the three and four contact, like that. Oftentimes you'll end up with the bite being edge to edge in the front with a class three, or in what's called anterior crossbite, where the bottom teeth are out ahead of the top teeth. So again, in review, it's class one is like this, class two is like that, class three is like this. So a good mnemonic to remember or not a mnemonic, but just a little trick to remember. Class one, that's what you want. Class two makes you look kind of like a bunny, and bunnies have two ears that stick up. So the top teeth are out in front like a bunny. So class two has, is like a bunny who has two ears. So that'll help you remember what class two is. And then class three is just the opposite like that, like a bulldog. Sometimes when we correct a class 2 occlusion, sometimes what we'll do, the best option for the patient is to remove the upper 4, and then we close that space. And what that does is you end up with a class 2 molar, but a class 1 canine. So as you remove this tooth and then close this space, this canine will come back and line up where it should. And the molar can be class 2, but the canine can be class 1. So that's kind of an interesting situation you should be aware of. Okay, there's lots of different kinds of elastics that you can wear. Um, one thing to keep in mind, the top braces and wires line up the top teeth, the bottom braces and wires line up the bottom teeth, but the elastics are what make those two sets of teeth fit together correctly. And so there's several different ways that you can wear them depending on wh how and where you want the teeth to move. So we'll just go through the several different kinds that are common for our practice. So this is called a class two elastic. So it goes from the upper three to the lower six in a straight line. And what the elastics always do, the elastics just pull in a, like they just pull together. So you would wear this if you're in a class two occlusion where the top teeth are out in front and you want to pull them back like this to get them to fit to class one. So this is a class two. Another way you can wear them is what's called a class two box. And a class two box looks like this. It's upper three, four to the lower four, five. This has a class two component because it's pulling like this, but it also has a vertical component that will help close the bite together vertically. This is called a class two vertical. Uh, this has a cl it goes from the six. Both halves of the elastic go over the three hook and then go down to the four. This is meant to, it's like a class two box, 
on steroids. So it pulls class two like this to correct a class two, but it's got a lot of vertical pull to close a bite on the side if the teeth are open like this, it, like this. It helps pull them together. So that's a class two vertical. This is called a triangle elastic. It goes in a triangle shape from the upper three to the lower three, four. This is meant to just close the bite. So if the bite's open like this, it will just pull it vertically to get it to seat together. And that's called a triangle elastic. This is called a four tri elastic. It's a triangle, but just on the four instead of the three. So the triangle goes from three to three, four on the lower. The four tri goes from the four to the four, five. It does the same thing, it just pulls the bite together vertically, but it pulls it together if the bite is open a little further back. So that's called a four try. This is called an upside down triangle. It's like a triangle except flipped upside down. So it goes three, four on top to the lower four. It's meant to pull vertically, and sometimes we'll have an upside down triangle like that. This is called a class three elastic. It's like the class two, but just the opposite. It's meant to correct a class three occlusion. So if the lower teeth are out in front like this, this is just meant to pull so that it pulls the top teeth forward and the bottom teeth back until it sits together in a class one. So it goes from the upper six to the lower three, and that's called a class three elastic. This is called a class three box. It's similar to the class two box, but in a class three configuration. So it goes from upper four, five, to lower three, four. And it's meant to correct in a class three, but also has a more of a vertical component. So if the bites open a little bit in class three, like this, it will help pull it forward and down, pull those top teeth forward and down. That's a class three box. This is called an anterior box elastic. So usually this will require Kobe ties on the uh, teeth that you want to hook the elastic onto. Um, and it can be in almost any configuration, but the, and the doctor will specify which teeth the anterior box will go on. This one goes from upper ones to lower twos. This is if the bite is open in the front like this. This is just meant to vertically pull that together. Um, and so that's an anterior box elastic. Usually you have to place, like I said, Kobe's on these and these and these and these to get it to stay on well for the patient. This is what's called a midline elastic. This is if you have the midlines are off, meaning the line between the, the contact point between the central incisors is off. Sometimes we'll have them wear these. Um, again, you need a Kobe tie on the teeth that these are hooked onto, even though we don't have them here in this example. Um, the doctor will specify which teeth they go to. This is from upper left to upper left two to lower right two. Um, it could go the opposite way from upper right two to lower left two and that's called a midline elastic. The final kind of elastic is called a cross arch elastic. Um, that is when we wear the elastic across the occlusal surface of the teeth. So it would, we would have to put a cleat or something on the tongue side of one of these teeth down here, and then you have the patient wear the elastic. The doctor will specify, but you'll wear it from the post on the buckle side of one of these teeth to the tongue side cleat that we place on the inside. And that's if they have a tooth that's tipped in and in crossbite like this, you can have them wear a cross arch elastic and that will help correct that bite by pulling, in this example, the top tooth in and the bottom tooth out if you wore it from up here to down here because it just pulls this one in and the bottom one out. So that's called a cross arch elastic. I can't show it hooked on because I don't have a cleat on the tongue side, but you can get the idea.